YouTube, back with another video today. I'm gonna be going through how to make $10,000 per month. The simplest way that I know, which is gonna be over delivering with value. And I think that this is such a cliche thing that so many people tend to talk about, but they forget some of the more intricate details on how to be successful. Now, most people just say, hey, throw out some ads, not really be too good at your skill, not really be too good at selling, not really be too good at over delivering value, knowing how to create systems. But truthfully, if you are leaving your current job and trying to figure out a way to make money on your own so you're becoming an entrepreneur, you have to understand that there is a unique skill set that you need to have in order to be successful. That unique skill set is going to be great. And the way I look at it is you have to be able to understand you leaving your current situation of having a job or relying on somebody to pay you based on the hours that you work. Now you are working on your own. It is going to require an intense level of grit because you are going to have to understand that it's not going to be easy. No matter what I say, no matter what anybody says, you're going to hit bumps. It's going to be difficult, right? You're going to run into roadblocks. There's going to be obstacles you did not think about that are going to pop up. And the real question is going to be, how can you handle that, right? I remember briefly when I first got started uh, in my entrepreneurship journey, one of the things that really caught me off guard was I thought I could throw up a ton of ads and my experience as a life insurance agent would help me and I could just sell leads and people would sign up. You know, I would do great and I'd get a lot of sales. And the reality is that is not how it works, right? I didn't have any systems. I had no social proof. Honestly, I didn't even have any real confidence, right? I was literally trying to steal someone else's confidence confidence from videos I'd watch and YouTube videos that said, hey, this is going to work. I'd bought a course and they said, this is going to work. But what I didn't realize is I needed to gain confidence. I'm reminded of this even now when I learn a new skill before I ever try to go out and sell it to somebody else, right? I need to offer it to people, in my opinion, for free to get their feedback on whether or not they like it. You used to watch this video by Dan Harry was talking about basically how he went about learning how to create webinars and became successful. And he talked about how he just threw things out into the market because he assumed that that's what people wanted. But it wasn't until he literally had a group setting where he was like, hey, here's my course. I want a bunch of you guys to, you know, essentially, and I'm paraphrasing, come for free. And I'm going to show you guys what I have to offer. And at the end of it, he collected information and he was like, hey, is this what you guys wanted? And before that, you know, he would send out poll requests. What are some of your common objections? What are things that you're looking for? Why have you not paid? What would you pay a lot of money for? And a lot of times we skip that step, right? And the reason I'm explaining that first is because it's going to take an intense level of grit to get over that hump of realizing that you don't know it all. Whatever blueprint you were giving, whatever idea that's in your head is not going to work out exactly like you planned it. It never will. It never has. Not for any entrepreneur, not for any business owner, not for anybody who's been successful, right? And that's not to discourage you, but that's just to let you know that you need to understand your grit is going to have to come first, right? You're going to run into roadblocks, right? There's a reason why they say most businesses fail within their first, you know, two to three years. It's not just a number that's thrown out. It's because there's ups and downs, right? You may start out really, really hot and then it may go down. You may start out really, really low and it gets hot and it goes back down, right? But the reality is that mindset to understand that everything's not going to be the way it currently is, whether it's bad or whether it's good, you need to have that before you get started. Now, the second thing is you need to understand that having social proof is probably the most important thing for two reasons, right? At first, I thought it was just, hey, you know, I get more testimonials and I build confidence because I know that what I'm selling or the products or services that I'm giving away, they work. But the reality I realize is it's actually not for the clients, for you, right? People can hear, I learned in sales, right? You get what's called commission breath, right? You have this level of speaking differently when you really, really want something, when you really, really want the sale. But the moment you become detached from it because you're very confident, you know what it does for the client, that's when you start getting more sales. And it works the same when you have a business. When you're speaking to somebody, they can tell if you're really, really needing their business versus if you're just like, hey, it's cool either way. But you could only do that when you know that it works. And you talk to somebody and say, hey, I have this product and service. It's going to work really, really well for you. Here's why. Right. And then you let them decide if they want to versus, hey, you really think you need this? And, you know, you're pressing. Thing. They can feel that. People can feel that energy versus somebody who comes in the room and they're very confident about what they have to offer. So it's one of those things that you need to start out with giving your products and services away for free because it's going to develop confidence in you. Right now, if you have a ton of money and you want to just throw that ads or you can pay for all these people to bring you clients and you can fall on your face over and over and over again. OK, so be it. But most people don't have that. And the reason I don't go about it that way is because I learned even though I had the money to do that at the time, I didn't even feel confident speaking to the clients because I didn't really know what I was talking about. I was like, yeah, this will work. And they asked me a question. I'd be like, yeah, yeah, but, but it will work versus like, no, I know this is going to work. And here's why it won't work. And here's what we've seen. Because if you do that for five or six months, right? Easy way to do this, whatever you have to sell. And I always use this, any analogy for anything, right? We can use cars. You were 
trying to start a business as a barber, right? What I would do is I would start cut people's hair for free, take pictures, videos, ask people feedback, what they thought, how much would they pay for a cut like this? I'd do that for a few months, right? Because the reality is before you embark on this journey, it's one thing to know it's gonna take grip, but it's also a thing to know if you're trying to build a real sustainable business, social proof is gonna be the easiest way to do that over a long period of time through brand, right? Because if you just sell something, you don't have any social proof, it's gonna always be you that has to sell it. But the moment you have social proof, people can go to your website, they can go to your uh, social media profile, and they see all this information talking about how much people like it. And every review that you have, they're gonna be a lot more confident about making a sell. And now your social proof is selling it for you without you actually having to speak. So you send somebody a link and they're just scrolling through like, wow, all these people really like it? Yes, right? So that's down the line. But initially it's gonna build that confidence. You need that confidence to be able to speak to people. Let's say you cut your family chat for free and they're like, okay, yeah, that's cool, right? You start getting some initial feedback. Then you start reaching out to people who aren't blood related, but you're really close to them. Then you start going to your friends. Then you start going to teachers and people you grew up with. And eventually you start going into the cold market because you may make a little bit of money in your warm market. But when you expand outside of your warm market and go cold market, you could do cold outreach, you could do ads. Now, when you speak to random people that you don't know, you speak into them like they're your family members. You speak to them with pure confidence, no fear, no worry about, oh, will this work? No, I know this is going to work, right? Because I've done it for the past five to six months and I've learned over and over and over again. Here are the things that people said they liked and the things that people said they did not like, right? And once you understand that you have this strong foundation of some social proof for a few months, now you can leave your current circumstance. A lot of times if you were working a job and you're trying to figure out, okay, I'm trying to leave my job. I want to replace, you know, $10,000 that I'm making right now or whatever I'm making with, you know, getting some time back. You're going to have to honestly take a few steps back to take four steps back to take 10 steps forward. It's not a matter of like, okay, cool. You know, um, I'm just going to hop into this entrepreneur thing and everything's going to be great. No, absolutely not. If you have a job, whatever you're making, I would keep working that job and I'll start slowly implementing these things, right? Once you have, you know, a solid foundation, five to six months of pure testimonials, you can go up to people and say, Hey, here's what all these other individuals that I've worked with have said. Now you can say, Hey, I'll give it to you for whatever cost. So you're a barber, you're cutting hair for free. You do have five or six months. You got a ton of pictures. You got a ton of videos and you say, Hey, I'm gonna cut your hair for free. All I ask is if I do a good job or a bad job that you just go to my Google business page and just leave me a review. They say, okay, cool. I can do that for you. There's no issue or problem at all. They do it for you. You say, okay, perfect. Thank you very much. Right. After five or six months of doing that for, you know, if you cut one to two heads a day, now you have, you know, 60 reviews. You multiply that times five months, a 300 plus reviews on your Google, my business page or on your website or you screenshot it or on your Facebook or your Instagram or your TikTok or whatever. Now, when you go meet somebody, you say, Hey, my haircut's $50. Well, I can go down the street. Well, you could, but all these other people have said, it's great. Oh, go to your Google business page. It legitimizes you and you speak with confidence because not only do you actually have the social proof that's going to help you sell, but you have the confidence to know, like, I've got feedback from every single person. Most people, you know, offer a product or service. That's what I did for first year. I didn't ask for any feedback. I was just like, here, you can have it. Right. And I didn't realize that collecting that information would help out drastically. Whereas we still collect information to say, hey, how can we be better? What should we do? What improvements can we make? What product or service would you like to see? Because the market is going to tell you exactly what you need to offer. They're going to be very straightforward and blank about it and just say, hey, this is exactly what I'm looking for. And then you decide whether or not you want to give it to them and if you don't, right? So now that you have that, the third step, in my opinion, is literally just going to be making offers. Now we talk about this all the time. I'm on my page, I always talk about it because I'm a firm believer in it, right? You personally should be the one to actually go out at least do you know, your first month or two, you know, sales calls or onboarding clients, because it's important for you to know the process. If you know the process and you hire people, you understand how long it takes to achieve it, right? So if you hire somebody for an eight hour shift. If somebody says it takes four hours to onboard, you know that they're they're not giving you their best effort. And if you want to continue to keep them on your staff, you can. Now, if you've never onboarded somebody or you've never sold anybody and you're just hiring great talent, which I think is an amazing way to go about it. I'm not saying that you do this forever because I don't think that you could scale properly and look at things from the correct lens if you're so in the business. But if you're not in it, at least for the initial part, which you should be for the first five to six months anyways, while you're doing it for free. So that way, when you do start charging, you already know the objections, you know what people are going to say because you've went through that process. The only thing is you're just not charging people for the product or service at the beginning, but you're still over delivering. You're still providing them with tremendous value in what you do. Now you're just putting a price tag on it. Now it's just a matter of reps and volume, right? How many reps can you get per day? How many people can you reach out to? All those individuals that you did for free, if it's a recurring based service, I would go back to them. If it's a one-time product service, obviously you can ask them if they know other people, especially if you did a good job. And then it's just a matter of reaching out to 50 to 100 new people every 
every single day. And that may seem hard, but if you think about it, depending on what you have to offer, if you offer that product or service to everybody that you see on any given day, if you're somebody that's out and about, especially if you're still working at your job, you see individuals at the gas station, at the grocery store, you just walk up to them and say, hey, you know, I'm a barber in the local area. If you know anybody who might be interested in getting a haircut, just let me know, right? And you don't have to do it in a what very like robust way where you have a card or anything like that, but it could be very nonchalant and just uh, straightforward, but in a very respectful way too. And at the end of the day, if you do that over a long period of time, you'll start gaining customers. Customers will start knowing who you are. You have the social proof. So the moment that they know who you are and you keep that same process, you still ask them for a review, right? You're just building that up over time. You will eventually get there. And honestly, you'll probably surpass 10K a month a lot quicker than you could imagine because you're doing great work and you've put the work in on the front end to actually have a good product or service. When you have a good product or service, it works for you. I'm reminded briefly of my story, right? I've been doing life insurance lead generation for almost two years now. And one of the things I didn't realize was the, you know, the moment somebody buys with you one time, they always talk about it, it's so much easier for them to buy from you again because they're they were already a customer. It's easy for them to be a repeat customer. Well, I'm realizing now two years that clients I worked with, you know, last January, it's April as I'm recording this of 2024. So January of 2023, I have people hit me up in April, me again, right? Just texting me out of the clear blue sky. Hey, I'm still looking for this product or service. But I think if you over deliver, regardless of the season they're in or where they're at, they always remember that they can come back to you. And that's really how you stack and stack and stack where you build good rapport for clients to where you have a solid infrastructure of clients who will go to bat for you, will constantly come back to you. When you offer new products or services, they'll check you out, right? They always have good things to say about you. And I think that that personally is the best way to go about it because uh, people can respect that in any industry, no matter where you're at. So if you're looking to start a business, like I said, I would do grit and make sure that you you really emphasize over delivering for the first five to six months for free, giving away products or services. I know it sounds backwards, but trust me, the amount of confidence you're going to have talking to somebody when you do that. And when you do go for the ask, whatever you put the price tag on it, you can come up to them and say, look at all these people I've worked with. Most people aren't doing that, right? So it's a very contrarian way of going back. And then after that, it's just a matter of reps and volume and just reaching out to as many people you can every day. I would just pick a number, right? It doesn't have to be 50. I like 50 to 100. You could pick a number 20, 15, even 10. It doesn't matter. If you reach out to that same amount every single day, I promise you, right? You will eventually, people will just start coming out of nowhere, hitting you up. You'll become more known in your space and what you do. And the next thing you know, you'll be making way more than $10,000 per month simply just with these strategies. The only difference is what I'm telling you is not sexy. It's not the thing that everybody wants to hear because it actually requires hard work. But at the end of the day, if you're trying to make real money and you're trying to grow a business legitimately, you know, it's going to take hard work. Once again, my name is Trey. I'm the owner of Agent Lead Lab and Yelp Pride Digital. We help clients do lead acquisition. So basically, you know, if they have products or services, our job is to offer them individuals who are looking for it. Back to the barber analogy. If you are a barber and you move to a new city and you need to figure out how do I get new barbers and you do have excess capital and you're not going to do it the way that I stated, right? You can hit us up and we'll be able to get your barbershop filled with new clients. That's essentially what we do. So I'm qualified to speak to you. We made a little over $1.2 million in our first year of business. Um, we are constantly growing and um, looking for new ways to just help people. So I just get on here on YouTube to let you guys know about some of the insights that I've learned that have been able to help me as a professional athlete and also as an entrepreneur. So like I said, if you guys have questions, please make sure you like, comment, subscribe. I'll see you guys next time.